Welcome to the Hasbro Marvel Legends panel. And then we're going to give you some great surprises and a sneak peek at 2017. This is a great time to be a Marvel Legends fan. We have more characters, we have more segments, we're getting more media coverage than ever before. And a lot of that is because of you guys, the fans, the collectors. We're going to make sure that we finish the presentation and allow some time for Q&A and feedback at the end. Uh, it's very important to us as we do our jobs to get your feedback and hopefully you'll see when you see some of the products that we're going to be launching later this year and next year that a lot of what we do was actually based on the feedback that we received from you guys. So let's keep that going. Um, I want to start by introducing the panel first. So he needs no introduction. <laughs> Jesse Falcon is a, a great partner of Marvel Studios. Entertainment. We also have Dwight. Dwight is the senior design manager at Hasbro. You also know Dwight very well. Yeah. And then we have Bobby Bala carrying the Captain America 75th anniversary shield. On the marketing side, I'm Jorge, I'm the uh, brand director for Marvel Legends back in our home office in Rhode Island. We have Peter Parker's prom date, Megan Meneshman, also from marketing, and she specializes in the Spider-Man segment. And then the guy that put the presentation together, he's, uh, he's a great marketer, but he's also an awesome collector and fan, Ryan Tang. I want to mention two more people before we get started. They're not up here in the panel, but they're very important members of our team. We have Tony Colella. He's sitting right here in the second row. And my boss, the VP of uh, Hasbro Marvel. He's not here today, but um, Adam Beal, big part of, of what we do. So with that, I'm going to bring Ryan, and he's, uh, we're going to get started with the presentation. Thanks, Jorge, hey, everyone. Welcome to the Marvel panel. We're going to take you through some of our fall 2016 items, things you'll be seeing very shortly. You might have already seen them down in the booth. So first up, uh, our first of two con exclusives for the year, right? This is our six-inch legend, the raft set featuring Spider-Man as well as five villains. Including some first timers uh, in the Six Inch Marvel Legends scale, and, uh, the Enchantress, Dread Knight, and Purple Man, Kilgrave. This comes in great packaging. You see it down for purchase in the Hasbro Toy Shop. Opens to display the raft breakout scene, and the team did a really clever thing here. You'll notice Electro, Eel, and Hobgoblin in the upper level there, who are all uh, in Spidey Wave 2 and Cap Wave 3 this year. A great display piece. Second con exclusive is the three and three quarter set, the collector's vault. Yeah, good job for the set. So here for the first time in Marvel Legends is the collector comic inspired here version, as well as a huge lockjaw. Also a flocked and articulated Moon Boy, Cosmo, and Howard the Duck. It's been a while since we've seen Howard, so glad to have him. We also have three ancient artifacts from Marvel lore. We have, the, from uh, left to right, we have the Wand of Watoom, the Casket of Ancient Winters, and the Zodiac Key. This also comes in a beautiful display box with a fifth panel that swings open. Got some bio copy and a nice little uh, venue here with the collector looking out over his collection. So these are available this year for purchase down at the Hasbro Toy Shop. Now moving to our mainline offerings, you know we came out big in February at New York Toy Fair with the debut of our new 12-inch line. We have these three awesome figures coming out this fall. We have Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Captain America. All right, yeah. uh, 
this is Bobby's line, so if you guys have questions later on 12 inch, we'll be happy to address those questions. We have great packaging here. Come down and take a look at it in the booth. Full window, foil, finish, uh, great art on the side panel, or I should say photography on the side panels. Um, yeah, like tons of accessories, tons of posability. So just going through them really quick, we have Spider-Man, including toe articulation, a couple of that. Next up we have Cap, great detail all around from the scuffs on his knee pads to his armor and shoulder pads. Bobby designed a really great way that the shield handles detach and you can actually store it on his back so he can actually wear the shield. Then Iron Man flying in here. Great flying poses, the power boost effects can plug into his hands or his feet. This one's really fun to play with, I have it at my desk. <laughs> All right. Also, you know, everyone's been snapping pictures with the premium roleplay items. So first up, we have the Captain America shield here. This is the plastic version. It's still a full 24 inch in diameter with that great finish. Two adjustable straps, so you can wear it just like Steve Rogers. Also, Iron Man electronic helmet. With the, um, let me get some sound. There we go. All right, so yeah, we've got some, it's got light up eyes and sound effects. Wow. Not that loud. <laughs> Can we take a bathroom break? <laughs> All right, and yet, yeah, and Bobby just threw some great detailing in in the face mask. The, the face plate is uh, magnetized, so it actually pulls off completely, and you can wear it on the top like that. So I'm really excited for this item. Of course, a big year, 2016, for Captain America, the first Avenger, just to help commemorate this, we have the Captain America uh, 75th Anniversary Metal Shield. So this shield is going to be shipping in October. It's actually available for pre-order now on Amazon, so go check that out. And a, a nice little Easter egg we threw in here. We have the official stamp 75th logo on the strap on the inside. This is a very special item for this year. And so that wraps up our premium role play segment. You know, uh, we've been having a lot of fun this year with the three and three quarter inch comic two packs, as you've seen. So we wanted to, okay, give it up for the comic book. <laughs> and uh, we have this, we've had it down in the booth, but just to recap, wave three here. We've got two Guardian themed items. So first up, we have Gamora and Star-Lord. Now, for those of you who were wondering, right, Gamora was our fan winner for 2014, so she's in three and three quarter inch this year. Then we also have Rocket and Groot. Pretty cool, right? Oh, no, sorry, that's not the right group. That's the right group. <laughs> the largest group we've ever done. That should be available this fall. That's the final wave, wave three of the comic two packs. And here are the packaging and the comics that you will get inside. So legs come separate. <laughs> All right, moving along to six inch. Of course, everyone's really excited for Doctor Strange this year. So we've had this downstairs in the booth this week as well. The build a figure here will be the comic version of Dormammu with the new a new paint job and new flaming skulls there. We'll be joined in the wave by Nico and an all new Iron Fist with uh, interchangeable hands. Very cool. Also, we're bringing back Brother Voodoo uh, from the, the comic -Con set last, Comic Con set last year, as well as a classic Doctor Strange with paint. And then we also have two movie figures here. These are the movie likeness, Doctor Strange with a spell effect, two alternate spell hands, and then we have Carl Mordo there. So this will be available for 10-1 uh, on shelf in support of the movie. And that's it, that wraps our panel. Thanks for coming around. Oh no, I'm just kidding, sorry. We have, we have 27 to this stuff. Okay. So let's get into the real meat and potatoes of this. Um, and I'll, I'll turn to uh, Jesse and our design partners to intro all the great character reveals we have. So first up, we're going to start with three and three quarter. All right. So yeah. So starting off uh, our wave one of 2017, we're really happy with uh, what we're starting the year off with. We got a really strong wave one. 
Well, first we have Lady Deadpool. Uh, she is from the Comic Con set some years ago that we thought was good to get back out there for some people that didn't get her. Then we have a new Moon Knight, a long overdue figure. Super cool, lots of detail. You'll see him down there in our booth. A Spider UK, just to round out your Spider Verse. An all new, all new, all different Iron Man. And for if some of you notice, he's got a crunch. And another long overdue figure we have Maestro. He's our, uh, our big guy for the year. And last up, we have X-23. So, uh, she went through her dad's closet, found his costume, and decided she wanted to be Wolverine, so we figured we'd do her justice. All right, that was our three and three quarters segment, and now we're gonna talk six inch. So we have a couple of different assortments for 2017. First up, we have Spider-Man. Cool, the, the most merry action figure we've done so far in Legend Sixes, the Jackal. Uh, crazy mad scientist, we've never done him. He's 100% new sculpt. Uh, we think he looks pretty cool. I know you guys have seen him all week. Hopefully you guys like him as well. And sticking with the green motif, uh, you know, it's our first uh, classic green goblin. So he's kind of a mixed parts of some of our hobgoblin, brand new, really uh, much larger glider. Uh, fantastic, amazing uh, face sculpt. I think it's probably one of the best ones we've done so far. And uh, there you go. Get one of Peter's greatest friends. Uh, once more, no, this is uh, this is our Spider uh, UK. Thanks um, for copying me. No problem. <laughs> Anytime. I'll, I'll steal good ideas from anywhere. Uh, so, some of you guys uh, noticed, some of you have, and this is actually another 100% new body. Our uh, tooling was starting to run uh, run dry on Bucky Cap. He was being used too much, too many places. So what we did is, instead of just tooling that same guy six or seven or eight more times and giving you the same figure, we are looking to tool a entirely new body at the exact same height, hopefully, uh, and uh, but it's a little more buff, it's a little more supersized. So now as we go forward in the next couple of years, we'll be able to get some more variation on your shelf. So you get a little bit more, you know, super, super strong guy to go along with Bucky as well. As a more lean guy, this is the new Spider 2099. Once more, 100% new. He's a little more ripped, a little bit more thinned out uh, than Bucky Cap. So once more, give you guys a few uh, new silhouettes to work with on your shelf. Some of you at Spider-Man, we've been a uh, long video. We haven't touched this character since 2008, 9-ish? It's been a long, long time. So with the new bodies that we've uh, brought forward for Spider-Man in the last few years, we thought it was more than time to bring out our, uh, our dear friend Peter in his uh, black costume. And Kamala Khan. You know, one of Marvel's breakout heroes a year ago, uh, you know, our fate, uh, one of our new favorite Inhumans, uh, decided to pick up the mantle of Miss Marvel. We think she looks fantastic, and we're super happy to bring her to you. She'll have alternate parts, so she's going to have a big super stretchy fist and a big open slap hand. Uh, and you can pop those off and swap them out with more normal sized arms. So, you guys uh, excited to see her for the first time? The first the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie for 2017, Guardians of the Galaxy, and of course, the Six Inch Legends were such a big hit in 2014, and bringing them back for 2017. And yeah, now, this Wave 1 is going to be something different. Uh, normally in Wave 1s, they're all classic, right? This time, we were able to get such great reference from our Marvel partners early enough along. This wave is actually going to be split, so it's going to be half MCU and half classics. We don't have permission to show you the MCUs today. Uh, the studio and everything are they're working out their time for release of those costumes, but we do have the classes to go through. So first up, uh, Sam Alexander, uh, Black Nova. Uh, we think he looks cool. We've seen him down there again. Another fantastic use of our newer uh, boy body scale. Uh, great character. He's been in comic books now. He's had his own title for a couple of years. Uh, he's been a fantastic read, and we hope you guys can you, you enjoy adding him to your show. Sam, last year was the first time in a while. He's coming to you asking for, wow, 
kind of person, front row. Hi. You weren't there, you weren't there a minute ago. Um, so uh, we had a big poll last summer, and the vote winner was Angela. So after discussing with Jesse where she belongs, and she's got some Asgardian blood as well, and we do have a Thor you know, movie coming up in the near future. But we decided because at the time she's teaming with Guardians, so this is where she belongs. Once again, 100% new. Her height stands somewhere between Moonstone and She-Hulk, kind of a new, you know, base kind of mid-tier body for those, you know, super badass as guardians. We figured they should be a little bit bigger than normal people, and uh, we think she looks fantastic. Once more, hope you guys like her. And I'm gonna take a pause here for one second to remind you all that we have this year's fan vote going on on the Hasbro Pulse Instagram. Every day we're coming out with a new two-character matchup. So over those four days, each of those winners will then compete in a final four vote on the Marvel.com Facebook page. Stay tuned for more details on that. The first matchup was Songbird versus Solo. Songbird took it down. Then the second day we had, um, who did we have? Typhoid. Typhoid Mary versus Lasher Symbio, correct. And then uh, Typhoid Mary won that. So it's been all, been, been all up the femme fatale so far. Today's matchup is Citizen V versus the Scream Symbio. And then we have one more mystery matchup for you tomorrow, Sunday. So check out the Hasbro Pulse Instagram to vote and make your voice heard because we make the winners, folks. So you know about this. Do you guys like to see some more Guardians? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 
So next. Yep, and so we know Dazzler is a rock star and she's all about music, so I thought I'd add a little soundtrack for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. no. <laughs> yeah.
Jessica Jones in her, uh, her classic jewel outfit. We have a long overdue updated Age of Apocalypse Magneto. Nice. And Steve Rogers is back, and he's bad, and he's Captain America again. So here's our Hydra Steve Rogers, who also has ab articulation. <laughs> it's back. Hope you guys enjoy. Wow. We have here Dwight. Uh, we have lovely Miss Monica Rambo. Um, some of you guys have been asking for her for a while. And there she is. And that's Avenger. That's the next wave. Lots of things. She's, uh, she's current next wave. Is she current next wave? Oh, that's right. That's right. And this is what happens when you let Ryan do a presentation. He just kind of sneaks images in. How did we get a picture of Jesse's foot? Yeah. It doesn't look that bad anymore. I hope it's going to work. I don't know what those are, so. I put polysporin on it, so it's better now. What do you want, 
Herbie. What's Herbie doing in here? How did Herbie sneak into our presentation? Uh, silly robot.
Which one? Mysterio. So his hair is permanently curled. This minute you said Mysterio, it straightened out. Uh, it's it's one of Tony's uh, top five characters of all time, and uh, he's been uh, threatening me for years. So uh, hang in there, buddy. Hang in there just a little longer, all right? We got a couple more Spider-Man weeks coming next year, and he's one of the big hitters that we're still missing. So we're gonna try. Thank you for your question. Wave one, wave one, wave one of them. Um, do you know, is it, are you talking about the three and three quarters or the six inch? The three. Three and three quarter. Oh, the three and three quarter. Uh, that's a tough one. No one ever asked me. Megan, what's your favorite? Um, I like the Spider-Man UK. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Moon Knight. Okay. I'm an X-Men, so I'm going to go with uh, Wolverine. Yeah, we'll worry about you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. I think that's really more of an issue with the individual retailer right. because they've got to get better at like reaccepting. Yes. What happens if they purchase is that they take it home, open it up, fill it back up with a bunch of crap. And I've seen, I, I actually collect all those images because I'm astounded that yeah. people yeah. look at this and go, oh, that's probably what was on the shelf of so I'll just put it back out there. It's, it's like, you know, there's five different, <laughs> nothing's assembled. It's terrible. You know, just literally like someone took a bunch of collecting fodder and just dumped it back in the thing. I mean, basically, it's like once it goes out to retailers, it's like out of your hands. Yeah, so it's, it's really a retail issue. Right, okay, sounds good. So I would write a letter to, to every retail chain and keep yeah. doing that every day uh, <laughs> until they fix it. All the way up and back, so you can use really that cool. neck hinge, which I've noticed you added on the newer female figures. So, uh, can you make the, that request a possibility? For but wait, so if you were flying, wouldn't your mohawk just stay where it was? My mohawk is strong. It, 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 yeah, I have no choice in the matter. It would stay. That's, that's, no, that, that's, a, that's a very interesting. Uh, that's a very interesting comment. It's something I haven't thought about. But you're, you're also fortunate that a good chunk of our Sculpting partners are here today. You know, oh, hey, what's up, guys? We've been um, partnering uh, on, our, on our Legends line now um, with the uh, Gentle Dragon 3D uh, Studios for, for the last few years, and they're doing absolutely amazing work. So, um, along with Val, who runs our uh, sculpting uh, division at Hasbro, the two of them have been working hand in hand to really try to up the game. And I'll take some of those comments back to them as well so that they can be aware of some of those things that's something else we can look at. And we're also looking to uh, Lower the barometer of the, the actual you know, the hair on, on like the female. What does that mean? It means it makes it make it softer. Uh, you know, a, a couple years ago, a lot of our long-haired characters, their hair was very rigid. You know, it looked gorgeous, but you couldn't move it. Which one? Johnny Hippie Boy. Johnny Hippie Boy. Mr. Mullet. Mr. Mullet. Oh, I love Mr. Mullet. Uh, my Pony Tailless. Yeah. yeah. 80s prom. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So all those sculptors are here. I, I would like to see a little bit more distinctive ethnic uh, facial features in some of the sculpts. Or just a little bit of difference between some of these head sculpts. Like my nuke and my cable, it looks like the same yeah. dude to me. Or Which like, one? Like nuke and cable or radioactive man and Luke Cage kind of like have the same face. So seeing like, uh, I remember way back, 
a long time ago, you guys, or before this, used to sculpt based off of actual people's facial features, right? Mm -hmm. And other people too, right? So I was it'd be more interesting to see that again so that the face sculpts look unique from each other instead of kind of looking like the same guy in the sure, cosplay. Sure, no, 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 that, that's valid. We're also looking to um, change up some more expressions a little more. Uh, and doing that, I think, pretty well last year, trying to get a little more variety onto it what's going on in face. It doesn't always translate even on the 60 scale, which is a pretty good size for a collectible, but there's, you know, there are limits to the, to the size. But, but thank you, yeah. I, th I think maybe one of the other issues is, because I see all these sculpts come in, you know, in, in, as a native file, so there's no decoration on it, and I only see them decorated once you paint them. And, you know, a lot of times, there's there's a lot more finesse on a paint master than you will see in a finished production piece, and a lot of that depends on what time of the year it's coming, because, Sometimes you lose talent with painters at the factory after Chinese New Year, and, and it just affects all top lines, not just ours. But uh, uh, you know, I know a lot of that work does go into it, and, and if you, you, you may at the eleventh hour something may change or alter that perception. Um, if you feel that way, here's my challenge to you: learn how to paint, because I go in and I tweak all my uh, heads myself. Uh, because that's, I'm just that meticulous uh, when I was going to, especially if it's character I like. And it's nothing against what these guys do because I, I, you have to do that across the board with, with all products. You know, all products aren't going to be an exact replica. I mean, I would see Hot Toys are probably the closest. And you know, even they don't get it 100, 100, 100 percent right all the time. So. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so I just uh, was wondering if maybe any Maybe in 2017, would you be doing a new Charles Xavier because... Yeah! 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 Do you want him in his jumpsuit, his hover chair, a oh, wheelchair, chair, or his coffin? Hover chair! Yeah! 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 So, so yeah. Okay, just check. If you want a removable braid for that, we'll see you in the sponge. Now, we're talking no more stiff hands because the old toy biz one kind of looked like he was just trying to say hi to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that was, by the way, that was Patrick Stewart's uh, express uh, desire to have his hands in that position. He was like, I want to show you what my hands should look. I mean, you can still keep those hands with at least interchangeable hands. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're, uh, you're a very wise young man. You're following him and following him. Uh, actually, both the last two people kind of uh, brought up something that uh, I kind of like to continue on with. Uh, especially in the last year, we've very much been spoiled rotten with uh, wolf heads and energy effects and toy cars and tacos. Uh, without necessarily uh, revealing what they are, can we look forward to any more really insane Easter eggs and what that makes sense? We, we, we hope so. Yeah. Um, it's, it's something we actually love doing. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the best part about this collective yeah. team. Yeah. This is uh, honestly the first time in my career on Hasbro that we actually have people that are not only the great talent of what they do in the day to day business, but we have fans now across all of our primary disciplines. Ryan is a monster uh, comic book superhero fan. Yeah. Uh, Rob, uh, which, is, which is be, wasn't able to make it out here today, but he is our lead engineer. He is a huge comic fan. Tony, myself, Bobby, you know, and, and then we have the fantastic resource that is Jesse Falcon. So all of us together, you know, dive in on this fan line, you know, and we, we have those things, you know. I'll, I'll pitch a concept and then you know, Tony will send me an email like with a picture. If you thought about this, and he's like, no, no, I haven't. And we'll reach out to our sculptors and say, <laughs> uh, many times uh, after they've been working on it for a month or month and a half, and say, hey, can you add something to this? And they're usually pretty awesome to get into this. And so, yes, we do want to continue some of that type of fun. All I know is we have a third anger head in the universe next to so thank you. So Dwight, we got the five minute mark. We have five people left in line, so let's let's keep it to one minute per person, please. Okay, no problem. I just want to give a little about the three three quarter inch. I uh, wanted to know if there's any chance that we'd ever get like a, a an exclusive maybe a Herald of Galactus, like Airwalker, Fire Lord, Terrax, um, Lord, Nova, you know, like a, 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 a Comic Con exclusive or something like that. Oh, yeah. 
And if you ever thought about doing like vehicles, like the Punisher Battle Man or something for that, it's a really good idea. Yeah, it's a really good idea. I mean, I would, I would say that if that fan ever shows up at a Netflix show, that the chances of that escalate fantastically. Well, what would this room uh, be interested in uh, the uh, Ghost Rider car? Oh, that's, that's my exclusive. Awesome. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, I want to uh, thank you guys for um, obviously all the legends that you just straight dumping on us. I'm loving it. Also, I'm loving in particular uh, you guys with the interchangeable hands, the interchangeable heads, and blast effects. Gotta love that. Piggybacking off of what Pornham is talking about as far as heads. Um, they do great uh, expressions for the villains, but the, uh, the, he the heroic characters usually just have a, we'll call it, I guess, neutral expression. You think you consider like uh, an angry face or something like that, or a struggling face, or like posing with, or battling or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stepping up, doing it, you know, which we love. Uh, you know, I don't know what size they would be, but you know, hold out the hope, man. You know, maybe we'll get some of these giant monsters. I mean, giant monsters someday. Yeah, because for Galactus, we're talking about a guy who devours planets, so that requires big size. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and or a big, big, big belly, and a, and a big and a big bib, big bib, bib. Thank you for your question. Okay, yeah, last question. Thank you. Okay, Oh. Well, his, uh, build, talking about the big building figures, uh, way back when we got that classic giant man, I believe that was more than, I don't remember how many pieces it came out, but I want to say it was like 10 maybe? I don't know. Starting out. But the question I actually wanted to ask is kind of uh, in relation to what the gentleman said about the different facial expressions. I mentioned it to some of you guys earlier. Uh, if we could ever see something like, uh, an accessory pack, you know, I, I want an Eddie Brock hit, you know, play this Cassidy, unmasked Cyclops, I don't know. Just uh, something that you guys can make, like, available online. You gotta just figure it out, you know, that's, that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, energy effects, you know, maybe say a lot from the, from the X-Force pack, I finally get a second sword. I don't know. Sorry. 
It's actually packs are a little bit tough to do, right? I mean, it's, it's hard to find a retailer that's into that kind of stuff in this day and age. But you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take the idea of those pieces and see if there's a way that we yeah, can. Yeah, if we can, if we sold them as a deluxe with a figure, then that would be the way to get it. But, I mean, I think accessory packs on their own. It's not, it's not something retailers want to pick up. But I love the idea of yeah, the yeah, yeah. package with a ton of different stuff for a specific <laughs> character. That's quite nice. It's kind of a start. How long? Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Guys, that's all the time we have. Yeah. This was great. Thank you for coming. We'll be there all day tomorrow, too, guys. Thank you. Come down to the point. All right, we'll talk some more.